Okay, about uh, different components like what is CPU, RAM, ROM, motherboard, hard disk, CD-RAM, uh, not exactly CD-RAM, but SMPS, this kind of stuff. Okay, so how the components are look like, how CPUs look like, what is the use of CPU, what are the specifications we have to see for a CPU, what is 64, 32-bit, RAM and ROM differences, uh, what is the... Um, uh, RAM specifications, uh, what is ROM, what is BIOS, what is BIOS settings, what is the boot processing, okay, and uh, what is about a motherboard, what is uh, uh, about a SMPS, you can see, and a hard disk, SSD, okay, about hard disk and SSD uh, kind of stuff, okay, and uh, uh, we have to go through hard disk partitions, also and uh, troubleshooting at a uh, boot processing next uh, once we complete hardware then we have to go to operating system okay in operating system also there is uh, some more uh, troubleshooting technique is also there okay so this is we are uh, going to start pc hardware guys this is uh, a traditional block diagram of a uh, computer traditional means when we are uh, starting like in a school days or a start of college days any computer class start this is the block diagram okay so i'm not writing that one here actually i will do but it's very simple to understand cpu what is cpu processing unit right central processing unit you give an instruction from input device input to the cpu cpu process it and give the output on the output device okay cpu may require some information or a data or a instruction from memory or it want to store some information or data in the memory it will store guys this block diagram will change this later so that one i will show you okay these are the main pc hardware components so first of all we'll see pc hardware components so some people think cpu means this box this is cabinet this is called a cabinet this is not cpu guys this is the cabinet the cabinet contains your motherboard on motherboard cpu ram and also it is having facility for smps hard disk cd ram flappy disk okay so things we can able to go inside so this is a cabinet this is a cabinet Okay, so first of all, inside of cabinet, <coughs> inside of cabinet, inside of cabinet, so what will be there like a CPU? Uh, we have a list, why should we type? Okay, so simple. Few are may not be available nowadays, but few are there inside of the cabinet. Okay, central processing unit, CPU, central processing unit. Okay. Uh, this is the better place. We're sending a message. 
Okay, Govind uh, and Misri. Uh, Misri present and uh, where is Govind? Govind Prajapati. Very good. Okay, so what is CPU guys? Central processing unit. So which is nothing but our processor. And we have a RAM inside. Okay, random access memory. ROM, also called as BIOS or UEFI. Motherboard. Okay, so it's a main circuit board. Which all devices, all components, either directly or indirectly, are connected to motherboard only. Like CPU, RAM, uh, hard disk, CD-ROM, SMPS. Everything is connected, including pen drives, okay, power buttons. Everything is connected to motherboard only, okay. Hard disk, which we are storing our operating system and data. SSDs, same for a storage. We can store operating system, applications, and data in the SSDs. CD-ROMs nowadays, recent years, very recent years, CD, DVD kind of stuff is removed. Okay, because uh, um, the cheaper solution like a pen driver came, <coughs> you can store in a cloud kind of concept came. Still, you want a CD RAM, so you have to buy an external one. So, most of the desktops or laptops not coming with a CD RAM. So, become optional now. But we can connect. Some are having facilities. Laptops completely remote. SMPS, a switch mode power supply. Guys, our main power supply, main power connectivity supply is uh, AC power supply. Okay, next one is what our computer required, uh, what CPU, RAM, or uh, motherboard, uh, what power supply required is a DC power supply. Computer internal components, DC. So outside connectivity is AC power supply. Okay, of course, floppy disk completely removed from a uh, our systems okay like that next outside of this one so this is the cabinet but outside we are connecting so many kind of stuff right outside of the cabinet Okay, so we have a keyboard, mouse, monitor. These are the three compulsory. Okay, so without keyboard, you can't give input, right? So without a monitor, you can't see what is going on with your system. So, and a mouse is a mainly pointer device so to highlight or to select, or to easy to operate your system. Mouse is very important. So, keyboard is an input device, monitor is output device for a display purpose, and mouse. Is a pointer device, and also there is certain additional devices like a touch pads. In a laptop, we have a touch pads, touch screen laptops also. The touch screen laptop, desktops, all in one PCs, two in one laptops that comes with a touch screen. All in one PCs, two in one laptops comes with a touch screen. Okay, so you can give touch input. Mic and speakers to hear uh, the voice and as well as a speak, uh, like take a voice, like in because of there is a mic. I'm whatever I'm speaking. Okay, so my mic is receiving my voice and convert into uh, electrical signal. Then it is converted into digital form of signal, binary signal, and then it will process, right? So speaker, so what are the, if you speak, uh, my system, 
uh, convert your binary data into uh, analog format and analog to my speakers. Through my speaker, I can able to hear. Card readers, additionally, card readers, you have a memory card kind of stuff. Bluetooth devices, you want to connect any uh, Bluetooth headphones or kind of stuff. Okay, Bluetooth devices, external hard disk. Okay, this is added wantedly, guys. External hard disk. Why at external hard disk? Nowadays, these laptops and uh, stuff having limited spaces. The data is uh, we are downloading and creating. Even in myself, like a lot of virtual machines, I download a lot of operating system applications. So, a uh, <laughs> lot of data is there. So, what I will do, I will keep it in an external hard disk. So, then my main system has a uh, some free space. Joysticks, gaming controllers. Okay, game controller, joysticks also. Do. And uh, why I didn't told this is I will tell now. Okay, printers and scanners. I have a document in my computer. I have a picture in my computer. So that is soft to copy. Now I want to hand out a printed copy, a paper copy. So that is called a hard copy. So what we use printer okay for example you have a photo or maybe you have a certificate you have to send someone through computer through mail or to store into computer what you do will scan it so you will do hard, hard copy to soft copy okay you scan and store in your computer or you can send through the mail communication like that so these are the outside of the cabinet so these are the basic components of a computer system. Yes, are you okay? Yes, sir. Yes, sir. One by one sir? component. Yeah, tell me, tell me. Sir, about this scanner, what do you said? I didn't listen, sir. About scanner. About a scanner. scanner. Yeah, about a scanner. Now you have a, a college certificate. So you have to send through the mail. So you have to scan yeah. document. It will the it will scan and the scan copy comes to your computer, right? In the yes, yes. soft copy part. So you can send it from anywhere. You can store, you can modify kind of stuff. Yes, sir. Okay. Of course, we are using a cam scanners now. So most of the yeah, people may be not be known of how scanner is look like. OK. Very good. CPU. What is CPU? CPU is nothing but a central processing unit. This is also called as a processor. What is the processor? It is a brain of the computer. So without a processor, there is no computer. Without a processor, there is no computer concept. Is that? Mm -hmm. Okay. It is a brain of computer. So semiconductor device means uh, actually it is made up of MOSFET, uh, metal oxide semiconductor uh, uh, kind of stuff. Okay field effect to transistor. Okay, it is a single chip. As I said, this is not CPU guys, this is the cabinet. CPU is a simple single chip. It performs arithmetic and logical functions. It performs arithmetic and logical functions. Okay, how the CPU is look like? Like this. Simple chip uh, we can able to carry. So this is processor. No? It is uh, inside the motherboard. Which is inside a motherboard. Correct. Good. Okay. So you see, this is entirely motherboard. This is a soft CPU socket. The bottom one is CPU socket. This guy is trying to put a CPU on the socket, and they will lock it. Okay. This is how actually CPUs look like. And these are a different type of CPUs. Almost all look like a same only. Okay.
okay so different model of cpus are there for computers again again different Okay, so Intel, AMD, different type of different organizations providing different type of bus. Here is outside manufacturers. Okay, processor for desktop or laptop, mainly two processors. Okay. The manufacturers are a first one is Intel, next one is AMD, AMD, Advanced Micro Device. Okay, the Intel and AMD mainly in the market. The different CPU manufacturers are there. They manufacture in CPU. One is Intel, another one is AMD. Not only Intel and AMD, via Motorola, Okay, now welcome. Link, uh, okay, no problem. Yeah. Welcome. Do you remember Snapdragon? Yes, Snapdragon. Yes, yes sir. sir. It's processor. processor. It's a kind of processor. Android processor. It's a mobile purpose. Very good. Okay, so we have a media tech dimensions, mobile related processors, lot of processors are there. Okay, um, a different companies just for uh, our understanding. So for desktops and laptops, mainly we use Intel and AMD for different type of devices. It can be a router or a switch or mobile phone or maybe smart mobile phone, normal mobile phone. Okay, or it is it can be AC. Okay. So it can be a monitor, it can be a TV. So different type of processors are there. Different type of processors. Are there. So for that one, I have written like this. Okay. Via processors are not there MediaTek now. MediaTek is also a processor. Which one? MediaTek. It's it's a Android yeah, media tech. processor. Exynos is also there. Is a character data ID number. Samsung used this kind of processor. New processor is yes. came now. Dimensions are Samsung. Yes, sir. Dimensity. So dimensity is also of media. City. No, 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 no. Which processor it is? This one, the MediaTek one only. This yes, is sir, MediaTek. So it's also a MediaTek company. Yes. Yeah, yeah, processor yeah. model like is Qualcomm Snapdragon. So Snapdragon is a model. Uh, it's a MediaTek is a company. Yes, sir. And okay. MediaTek also is a Helio, Helio G80 like. Helio. Oh. Yeah, Helio, Helio processor. model. Is also there. Sir, Helio is also a model of MediaTek. MediaTek, okay. Then we'll put a Helio. Okay. So, new IQ. So, new IQ, it is a MediaTek, not Snapdragon. 6 is Snapdragon, right? One plus we see company, but already we discussed. Check the configuration, what processor, what RAM, what kind of things are there. Okay, very good. So these are different processors. 
different organizations use for a different types, including uh, S4C kind of stuff is also there. For me, it is important Intel or AMD part only. OK, when you want to buy a processor, I'm not talking about a mobile processor, normal laptop or a desktop. You are buying laptop or a desktop or you want to build a, your own desktop. So you need to know about certain things about a processor. OK, compulsory you should check these few things. OK, so every processor has a we are already seen system configuration, right? So every processor has a, a specific clock speed. OK, so I'm showing my uh, processor clock speed here. So my processor clock speed is uh, where it is CPU 2.6 gigahertz processor it is. So my processor clock speed it is. And uh, every processor has a, a bit uh, 16 bit processor is now gone from the market. We have a 32 bit or a 64 bit processor at there. OK. OK, 32 bit or a 64 bit type of processor it is. And every processor has a FSB. The FSB means front side bus. So because of this FSB, we will know what type of RAM you should use it. What type of RAM you should use it? What kind of RAM? It will decide RAM model and uh, ram clock speed H what type of clock speed it is suitable okay you have a processor but not every ram is not suitable so yeah, there is a specific ram models only suitable for this particular processor okay so it will matches the speed also know the cache memory also know the cache memory what is the cache memory? So you can see this one cache memory somewhere here bottom L1 cache memory, L2 cache memory, L3 cache memory. Cache memory is nothing but a, it's a kind of a memory device only, RAM type only it is, but which is built inside of processor, which is built inside of processor. So you cannot change the cache memory size. Cache memory size is fixed, which is built inside your processor. So more cache memory, better performance more instructions processor can able to take it at a time and it is fastly it can able to execute okay guys these processors when first time the processor manufactured 4 bit processor 8 bit processor 16 bit processor 32 bit processor 64 bit processors are there okay So earlier single processors means one processor, one die only it is, one core processor it is, single core processors, okay? For a more performance purpose, for certain server motherboards, they start using, what they are doing is, on single motherboard, they'll put a another processor, like this, one single motherboard have a multiple processors one single motherboard having a multiple processors. And the next challenge is for a normal desktop purposes, we have a processor that is not enough uh, to do daily task. OK, means yeah, earlier days, the you know, people use a laptop. I, I use a laptop in my engineering, so that is a 256 MB RAM, 256 MB RAM 40 GB hard disk. <laughs> OK, so that is now if I have a 16 GB RAM also not enough. <laughs> OK, I have a two uh, almost uh, two rate uh, 500 GB hard disk and one terabyte hard disk 1.5 GB total space not enough. OK, already two terabyte of hard disk is full. One terabyte is also full. OK, not enough. So. Increasing application requirement, application 
requirement is increases. So CPU performance, RAM requirement is increases. OK, so what they done, they started doing like this. They take one processor. And another processor like this. This sandwich two processor. OK, and they use one single cache memory. So this is a processor one. This is processor two. So instructions or data will share to both means two processors combinedly work as is one processor. This is called a dual core. But dual core performance compared to the core, core to quad kind of stuff is different. OK, these dual core processors two processor, but shared cache memory, shared cache memory. Shared cache. Memory. OK, so then let people realize it is. Uh, instead of adding a two processor because it is a very big challenge. So what they have done, they split a one processor into two cores. This is core zero. Core one. OK, so this is called a. Uh, dual core. No, no, not dual core. Sorry. sorry. Uh, 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 what we can say core to geo. Earlier model is that is core to geo model. OK, same concept, but small difference is there. So what is it? Small difference. This is separate, separate cache memories. Separate, separate cache memories. It means the multitasking become more easier. Means multi two processors running at a time, two separate catches run different task. So the performance is increased. Same goes. So it's a core technology is improved much better. This is core zero. Core one, core two, core three. Each core having a separate separate catches. This is quad to core, quad core processor. Quad. Okay, this is quad. You know, octa core earlier days when mobile phones are uh, sales. That's when they know they'll specify it is a. Uh, octa core processor, deca core processor. OK, so like that. OK, so it's the same concept. OK, so this this is, is quad core processor. Same like this is the concept. Next one is thread technology. What is this thread technology? The divide this each core into two parts means there is a dual core and core technology. OK. It's, it's a, like a, 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 it's a kind of a threading is simple. It's a dual core means two process. OK. Uh, this core technology means dividing one processor into multi processor. OK, so this is a mixture hybrid type. So this is called a threading means this is two core processor. Earlier it is two cores. Now it is two cores, four threads. Two core, four threads. It's give performance like a four processors. If you have a four processor, how much performance you are getting? Same way you will get that much performance here. OK, so that's the point here. So any processor you check, check the number of cores per processor. Number of threads or logical processors. You have to check it. Number of threads are logical processors. So can you see how many cores are there? I have a two cores, four logical processor, four logical processors. OK. Next, uh, check the virtualization technology. In a recent years, guys, so almost all 64 bit processors, almost all 64 bit processors having built in virtualization technology. 
what is the virtualization technology useful sir yeah tell me sir whether it will be a two core or four core we'll get the same performance the four core uh, having more performance oh yeah more multitasking yes sir okay guys this is my physical machine think like this is my physical i have my laptop right so like uh, my physical machine i have my own hardware my cpu is there my ram is there my cpu my ram my hard disk okay and i have an operating system okay my operating system is windows 10 for example i have i got a new class that i have to teach linux linux is not application right linux is a also an operating system i need a, to teach linux so what i have to do i have to remove my operating system install linux okay or maybe dual dual booting not recommended guys otherwise i have to buy new lap computer or a laptop and install linux in it okay either i have to install in my pc other i have to buy new laptop or desktop to install a linux pc okay so i don't want to lose my operating system and my applications and my regular thing and i cannot purchase another desktop or laptop and there is a space related problems cost related problems again power supply separately okay lot of challenges are there so what i am doing is i'll create a virtual machine in the virtual machine i will install linux operating system and i will use it what i am doing i create a virtual machine in the virtual machine i install linux operating system and i start doing my work it won't affect on my operating system it utilize my hardware resources it utilize my hardware resources but not affect on my operating system okay this concept called a virtualization concept okay don't worry i will show you one example may you will understand yeah, recently means like a, a one or two months back so again i started to practice my devops with the jenkins install it's taking too much time so it is so linux pc it is a linux i installed in this one okay so i can run my linux machine uh, okay its uh, memory is very bigger mm general on general advance why 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 yeah and display storage hmm? i just created a machine or a yeah this is the ram so 2 2 gb ram okay that is enough uh, to run the linux machine see this this window so you can see it's a linux is running in this one okay my machine is my machine is windows 10 machine in this one i'm running linux machine in this virtualization concept okay guys using a virtual box this is called a virtual box or you can use vmware workstation you can use vmware workstation this is the vmware workstation using this one also you can able to create a different type of virtual machines 
32 bit virtual machine, 64 bit virtual machines. I can install different type of operating system. You know, I installed Linux, I installed uh, uh, Windows 10. This is uh, Windows 10. This is also Windows 10 uh, Enterprise Edition or a Professional Edition. This is Linux. This is Windows Server. This is Windows Server. OK. And uh, this is uh, some vSphere machine it is. I'll show you this is 2003 server. 2003 Hello, server. Yeah, tell me, tell me. Sir, what is the roles and responsibilities of DevOps engineer? That is. Uh, so DevOps in two parts, right? One is a development and another one is administration. So he handle all um, all the responsibilities for developer and administration as well. Yeah, one person maybe he want to handle both or maybe only administration. Okay. So this is our virtualization part, guys. So you can see my Linux machine, CentOS I installed. Okay, it is a little uh, feeling shy. <laughs> okay. So later we will. I will check that. Okay. So that is why you should also check your virtualization technologies enabled or not. And also you will see the CPU utilization speed and other kind of stuff. OK, so this is your model number. Already you know how to check the CPU information. OK. OK, here it is about a 32 bit and a 64 bit processor. OK. There's few points I want to tell not a complete 100% uh, information. Not like that. Uh, guys, there is a processor. First processor is 4 bit processor from Intel. It's a 4004 processor. I'm removing. I'm not putting all these things not required to read. OK. For 4 bit processor. So later it is we got a 8 bit processor. Then 16 bit processor then 16 bit processor later it is 32 bit processors 32 bit processor then now it is 16 bit processor and different processor like a, not only that one xeon processor specifically for a server uh, purposes okay so one point here uh, it is if you take 32 bit processor, if you take 32 bit processor, the the instruction size, the size of instruction is 32 bit. Size of instruction, one instruction you have written, that is size is 32 bit. You take a 64 bit processor, in the 64 bit processor can run 64 bit size of instructions. You take any application or operating system. The specification, but is it's a 32 bit or it is a 64 bit? How you know this particular application is 32 bit application? Okay, it represent like this. X86, X86 represent actually Intel. X86 represent Intel. Why? Because of Intel develop a 8086 processor from that onwards, it become a tradition. 86 represent. OK, 86 represent Intel processor and Intel mainly so for a very long period of time. They use 32 bit processor now 64 bit came. OK, so 32 bit also represent in the x86, i386, i586 or 32 bit. So x86 underscore 64 represent Intel 64. Intel 64. 64 bit means 64 bit x86 underscore 64 means Intel 64. X64 also like Intel 64. Another short form is Intel. AMD 64. Okay, actually 64 bit 
processors more popular earlier days with the AMD only. AMD company launch very less 32 bit mm -hmm. processor. Mostly it is 64 bit processors only. Okay, so AMD 64. So these are the representation of uh, 30 bit, 2 bit, and 64 bit. Okay, just for information only. So what is the advantage of this 64 bit? You are not required that much. Just uh, uh, only one information I want to add. Remaining is digital. So your processor who is that? Okay, guys. Um, system architecture type. System architecture type is 32 bit or can be a 64 bit. For example, your processor is 32 bit. Okay. Your processor is 32 bit processor. Your processor is 32 bit processor and you must use 32 bit device drivers also. And uh, your operating system also must be 32 bit. It's a compulsory to follow guys. So device compatible, drivers compatibility, operating system compatibility means first important is what type of processor is 32 bit processor means operating system is 32 bit. OK. Operating system is 32 bit and that installing device drivers also must be 32 bit. And applications, application must be 32 bit. So everything is must be 32 bit, <laughs> okay? But applications also support 16 bit with a uh, wow windows on windows wow 32 with a uh, wow 32 support it is a kind of small supporting uh, uh, patch kind of application it is so if you are running 16 bit application in 32 system becomes slower so you have to use wow 32 means windows 16 on windows 32 meaning is windows 16 on a windows 32 space is not there okay so uh, using that one it can able to run next 64 bit process 64 bit operating system compulsory okay 64 bit device drivers and 64 bit application if you want to run 32 bit application, you have to use a built in feature like a WoW 64. Windows 7, Windows 8, Windows 10 having a built in features. This WoW 64, that's we can able to run. Earlier XP days, we cannot able to run. Okay. So these are the things you have to keep in mind how 32 bit is look like 64 bit is look like and there are some 10 features are there guys so complex instructions we can able to run in 64 bit we can run complex instructions as compared to 32 bit it required more memory all these things are there so we uh, it's become very big that's why i'm leaving like last point i will tell about a uh, Processor. 
okay the last thing we are going to discuss here about a heat sink what is this heat sink so different heat sinks heat sink is one of the very important part for a processor and your system <clears throat> okay guys look at here this is a processor the processor while it is working it produces lot of heat lot of heat it will produce if it is become overheated what will happen your processor your cpu will damage your cpu will damage so how to protect it put a heat sink on it put a heat sink on it what is this heat sink will do it absorb this heat absorb the heat okay what is the heat sink will do it will absorb the heat from processor next on this heat sink there is a fan okay there is a fan kind of stuff is there there is a fan what is this fan fan blows air through fan blows air air fan blows air to the heat sink heat sink get cool so your processor te temperature is maintain stable okay not to get overheated kind of stuff okay so this is how it is like work cpu heat sink the fan and their thing so you can see so different heat sinks you can see a uh, uh, heat sink see this is the heat sink and fan assembly this is a picture i i put it this is another heat sink so this is also heat sink see this is the copper one touches the processor and it absorb the heat and it the cool air will be blown into it so this is another kind of heat sink it is another kind of heat sink this is another type of heat sink it is this is laptop heat sink okay for laptop purpose this is the heat sink so i have a actually i have one good clean uh, picture it's a more uh, blur type okay so this is a uh, ulta <laughs> this is how heat sink is there you can see from it okay so that is a uh, 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 actually a picture of heat sink this is for laptop even laptop have a processor right do not think laptop don't have a processor laptop also having a processor which is inside your laptop only but it is also will get heated it is also will get a heated once it is getting heated so if you see this small part is a heat sink part so what it will do it try to absorb the heat heat will be absorbed from here and it is passes through this copper rod and passes through this heat sink the fan will run and blow air to make it cool okay that's why guys when you are maintaining your laptop don't put your laptop on your laps it produces lot of heat okay so you are closing your laptop vents vents means the holes breathers holes we can use like a vents are a breathers means the laptop holes okay you are closing laptop holes it the heat cannot able to escape what it will do try to damage your pc the battery will be damaged and your laptop components also will be damaged okay so and also don't put any thing surrounding to your laptop don't put your laptop on bed 
don't put your laptop on any leather surfaces leather kind of surfaces put very simple table okay so normal wooden table is always better don't put it on a paper also paper also, okay so don't keep it away from the desk keep it on a plain surfaces and give more space for vents so let it cool itself okay so these are the next one is heat sink paste what is this heat sink paste if you see this is a enter your motherboard this is the processor on this processor is applying heat sink paste what is the use of this heat sink paste That is the use of this heat sink paste. So between your processor and the heat sink, there may be a little gap. Or maybe so so pure uh, like uh, you can so more heat, the heat can be easily go to more contact will it will create more contact between your processor and the heat sink. So heat sink can easily absorb more heat. OK, this heat sink paste cannot be uh, wore by uh, one year or two years. It's like a three, four years. The heat sink paste will be like that. Only. Even for my laptop, I don't remember. I, even I didn't apply any heat sink uh, paste on it. OK, from the, the day you purchase it. <laughs> OK, still it will be there until unless you touch it. You touch this heat sink fan and all for cleaning purpose or something you have done the heat sink paste will be get a disturbed. Like if it is got disturbed, then better to apply it again by purchasing a proper heat sink paste. OK, different cost is there, guys. Some are low what cost. Is the use? What is the use of it? Yeah, what is the use of uh, heat sink? Paste, heat sink paste. Yeah, what is the use of heat sink? It absorbs the heat from your processor. Right? No, uh, I'm asking of the paste. Yeah, the you're paste. asking that one, but I'm telling answer, please. <laughs> okay, okay, sir. First one is what is the use of heat sink? It absorbs the heat, right? So, it, yes, sir. Okay, it absorbs the heat. So it is a both are hard components, both processor and heat sink, both are hard components. So there may be a small gaps and to absorb more heat from the processor means the processor is get, producing a lot of heat, so it should be absorbed by heat sink. So it will give more contact between them. OK. It will okay, give sir. more contact between your processor and heat sink. And it is give more observation means more heat observation from heat processor. So then heat sink can able to absorb more heat from your process it give that means it give a sensitivity yeah very good like your uh, toothpaste yes sir okay or maybe grease you know bike grease apply so it is give yes sir more contact smooth contact kind of stuff okay so this is yes sir okay. and one point is there why i told this much story also there is a troubleshooting related means you start your PC, you start your PC and uh, after some time you PC started and restarted. PC started and restarted. OK, if your system started itself again and again, possible, there is a lot of possibility is there. One of the reason is CP is overheated. OK, one of the reason is CP is overheated. OK, so what we have to do, there is a possibility like, you know, people putting a. Processor. Or heat sink. Paste. OK, the processor is there. Heat sink is there. They'll put it properly, sometimes not properly also. OK, so sometimes heat sink paste is cleaned. Sometimes the heat sink assembly, the heat sink assembly is not attached 
sometimes the fan is not running the heat sink fan is there now the heat sink fan is not running okay so because of that one what will happen cpu is getting overheated okay in proper sitting of heat sink fan related issues heat sink paste related issue means that is thermal paste sometimes because of dust sometimes because of over cleaning okay so cpu is getting overheated to prevent from damaging this heat sink oh, sorry processor is getting overheated okay processor is getting overheated means it will damage what system will do to prevent it it restart the pc to prevent it it restart the pc not showing any errors your system is getting heated means you sorry your system is getting restarted so one of the reason is cpu get overheated cpu is get a overheated so what to do please check please check the processor heat sink is sitting properly or not fan is running properly or not heat sink paste is there or not and another one is dust you know in our office in earlier office so what happened uh, is working and system so system is started working after 5 10 minutes it is restarted it happened multiple times so i got a doubt so i open the cabinet and see the cpu the heat sink position is like this full of dust because of dust heat uh, he is not able to escape heat is unable to escape so pcp is getting or heated it should be cooled down right it's not able to cool down then what we done so we take a one brush okay we take a one uh, uh, brush and clean up the heat sink uh, fan and uh, as well as this heat sink one also okay so we clean it and make sure make it it is working you can use a brush like this so like a, this kind of brushes or a small size brushes also okay not required very costly environment this is air blower so compressed air blower or you can use a bulb type air blower also don't use vacuum cleaners don't use vacuum cleaners this is for laptop this is for laptop cleaning okay so clean up your laptop or a desktop okay like this Okay, next one is we are going to discuss about a ram and rom okay ram and rom. this is a symbolic representation clean up laptop how it is inside in your laptop also next one we will discuss ram and rom guys take a break uh, break at 10 minutes 15 minutes break then we'll start okay when will we back okay sir 11:55 Okay. Because RAM, RAM and ROM and ROM, RAM, both are the big, bigger chapters.